Hi, I am Skiko and welcome in part 2 of my pathfinding tutorial in GameMaker. We will see in this tutorial how we can build the path. In the previous tutorial, we have filled the grid for every square where the enemy can go. And if one of these squares is our goal, then we will stop to fill the grid. We can see the result on the screen. So our goal now is to select the right path and build a path. Now we have to select the right path. In this drawing, you can see that we want to select the blue path to reach our goal, which is the player in blue. We don't care about the red path or the green path. So we have to build a path and we will start by the end and go back to the first point. So add point 9, then 8, then 7 and so on. The tricky thing is we must select the right number. Indeed, there is several 5, for example, and we don't want to select the number 5 in green path, but the 5 in blue path. Ok, let's start. First, we will do a little improvement in the script fill the grid. We will break the loop if the size list is 0. When size list is 0, it means that we check all the positions where the enemy could go, and no one is the goal position. We destroy the list point underscore list and we destroy js underscore grid pathfinding because it takes up memory. Return the path underscore on and then break the loop. If the goal can be reached, we will have a script to build the path. So script is scr underscore build underscore path and it contains two arguments. The first one is x coordinate of x goal and the second one is y coordinate of y goal. Ok, let's create a script called scr underscore build underscore path. Let's initialize the variables in this script. We have x goal and y goal, they are coordinates where we want to go. Then we create a path with the function path underscore add and we call it path underscore building. Then there is a variable value, it is the value in the grid enemy. Then there is x previous, I will explain it in later, and then there is variable a, b, and n. It will be used when the enemy fall. We will add the first point to our path with the function path underscore add underscore point. The first point is easy because it is the final position. We multiply x goal by cell underscore width to get the real position in the room and we add a half square to have the point centered in the middle of the square. GameMaker asks a speed for the point in this function, but in our case, we don't care because we will not use the function path start. So we put it 100, it doesn't matter. We will use our own script to follow the path. It will be seen in the third video. Then we will store the number contents in the grid for the final position into the variable value with the function ds underscore grid underscore get. In the drawing, you can see it is 10 for this example. Now we want to go back and find the right 9, the right 8, and so on. So we will do a for loop with i equals value minus 1. So it is the number just before the value of the final position. And we will do it if i is strictly superior to 0. And when we will loop, we will decrease i by 1. Then we will put x goal in x underscore previous. It will be used later. And we initialize n to 0. This variable will be used when we fall, so it has to be reset in each beginning of the loop. Then we will search our first point. With a gs underscore grid, you can use a function called gs underscore grid underscore value underscore exist. It finds whether a certain value appears in a region of a grid. This function needs six arguments. The first one is the name of the grid, the fourth coming are the region, and the final argument is the value to find. It will return a boolean. If GameMaker finds a value, then it will return true, and if not, it will return false. So with this function, we will search in a little region if there is a 9 around the 10. The first region that we will explore is a square of 3 by 2. Arguments are x goal minus 1, y goal, x goal plus 1, and y goal plus 1. 
Let's see what it looks in our example. We will search into this red grid if there is a 9. You can see that there is a 9, so this function will return true. And we want to know now the x coordinate of this 9 and the y coordinate of the 9. It can be found with the function gs underscore grid underscore value underscore x on gs underscore grid underscore value underscore y. We put the exact same arguments in this function that we put into gs underscore grid underscore value underscore exists. And we store the data into x goal on y goal. Because now we found the right 9, so it becomes the new position. And we add this point into the path with the function path underscore add underscore point. In this region 3x2, you can see that we will check several movements of the enemy. We might have the enemy coming from the right or the left. And also if the enemy do a jump vertically of one block. So we check all these movements in six lines of code. If we don't find the value with the first grid 3x2, we will test another region. This region will be a region of 5 by 2 with x goal minus 2, y goal x goal plus 2, y goal plus 1. So let's see what it looks. You can see in this example where we want to find a 4, enemy has to do a diagonal jump to go to the 5. So with this grid, we cover the diagonal jump. We cover also the horizontal jump. So if we find the value in this region, we can store in x goal this new x position. And then as you can see, we will check if the square next to us is empty. Why? Because it might happen in some cases that it is not the right number to pick as you can see in this drawing. In my game, it happens sometimes so I add this condition to be sure that we can do a diagonal jump or horizontal jump. So we want to check the square between the two numbers to know if it is empty or not. So y coordinate is easy. It is the same as y goal. On the x coordinate, we want to know if we have to check right or left. It is done with the function sign x goal minus x previous. So if we found minus 1 on this square, it means that we can do a diagonal jump or a horizontal jump. So we store in variable y goal the new y coordinate position and add the point to the path. But if it is not the case, it means that the enemy must fall to go to this position. So we will do the code to find the number when we fall. It is the same logic as the script fill the grid, as you can see in this drawing. We have to check the square above until we find the right value. When we fall, the x coordinate of the square will be x previous plus 1 if we want to check right or x previous minus 1 if we want to check left. So we will check all of those positions and if we find the right number in a square, we can stop the loop. Inside the do loop, we put n equals n plus 1. So we will increment by 1 each time and we initialize this variable to 0 at the beginning. So we will start with n equals 1. Then we put in variable a the number that there is into the grid of the enemy of the square just above the right side. And for b it is the same logic to check the square to the left just above. The y coordinate is y goal minus n to check the square just above in each time we do a loop. We stop the loop when a or b is equals to i and we add one safety condition to not have an infinite loop. If the y goal minus n is under 0, it means that we didn't find square with the right number by checking all the squares in the grid, so we can stop the loop. And then we check if the value was found with the function gs underscore grid underscore value underscore exist. And if it is true, we update y goal on x goal and add the point to the path. Okay, now we have to make the case when the enemy fall. So it will be the exact same code as before. So we check all the movements of the enemy left, right, horizontal jump, vertical jump, diagonal jump, and the fall. 
and we add a point to the path each time we found the right number. And we will do it until i is superior to 0. When the loop is done, we will add the last point to the path, which is the position of the enemy. It is the exact same logic as before. And we don't want the path closed, because we want an open path. So we set it to 0 with the function path underscore set underscore closed. Ok, but our path is in reverse. Indeed, we start to the end to go back up to the position of the enemy. So we can reverse the path with function path underscore reverse. Ok, let's see if it works. Go to the draw event and draw the path. By the way, the code could be put in draw underscore GUI event because it will draw to the top of all elements in your game. It is only for debugging purpose, so don't forget to remove the code when it is finished. If path exists, we draw the path with function draw underscore path. It takes four arguments, the name of the path to draw, which is path underscore building, and the x and y coordinates where we want to draw the path. It is the coordinate of the enemy, and the last argument is if we want to draw in absolute or relative position. We set it to true because we want to draw it in absolute position. I remove also the draw set color because it is not efficient here. We want to set the black color once, so I put it in create event of the enemy. And in create event, initialize the variable path underscore building and set it to no one. Ok, let's test it. Ok, it works, great, we will check several positions. Let me remember you that my own code is not the most efficient, but I want to keep it simple for better understanding. We can and we must improve it. For example, remove the points in the path that are unnecessary. Indeed, if we have several points in a straight line, we will have only the beginning point and the final point which are important. It's finished for part 2. See you next time for the last part of this tutorial. We will see how we will follow the path with the enemy. Bye!